good morning students today we are going to discuss about disadvantage group that is homeless and slum dwellers first of all we'll discuss what is right of housing right to housing means uh, the right to live in adequate shelter adequate shelter means the shelter which is secure which has peace and where a person can live with dignity it doesn't stand for merely having a roof over one's head the main features which are required for a adequate shelter are an accessible livable space accessible means where people can come and go personal space and security where adequate lighting and ventilation is there it should have safe infrastructure and it should have protection from weather adequate location with regard to work and basic facilities means the schools hospitals or other basic amenities should be available in the nearby surroundings and it should be at a reasonable cost these are the features which we have discussed in the previous slide that is it should be affordable it should have privacy it should have space heating ventilation security and stability water lighting sanitation facilities accessible location all these are the features of adequate shelter now what is the meaning of homeless an individual who lacks a fixed regular and adequate nighttime residence is known as homeless or an individual who has a primary nighttime residence that is means uh, we are going to discuss two three categories uh, and these categories uh, include those people who will be known as homeless as these people stay in public or private shelters designed to provide temporary accommodation these are not permanent in nature because there are three features that it should be fixed it should be regular and it should be adequate right so public or private shelter which are designed basically for a temporary uh, accommodation doesn't include a permanent residence so these people living in these kind of accommodations are homeless it include welfare hotels or uh, uh, congregate shelters and transitional housing for the mentally ill suppose a person is having some mental disorder and that person is in mental hospital or mental asylum in that case that is also a temporary accommodation that is not going to be there for uh, the whole life so that is also considered as homeless then the second category is an institution that provides a temporary residence for individuals intended to be institutionalized like for example women's hostel working women hostel or another example is like rehabilitation centers rehabilitation center as are meant for a, a specific purpose and the person is there for a not for the long time period it is only for up to that particular time period uh, till when the treatment will be given to that person similarly in the working women hostel the females could stay there as long as their job is in that particular area so this is again is temporary residence the third category is a uh, public or private place not designed for or ordinarily used as a regular sleeping accommodation for human being for example if somebody is uh, sleeping on railway platforms or uh, say for example if person is sleeping on the road sides footpaths so that is also not a regular sleeping accommodation this kind of uh, person will also be known as homeless now the factors which are responsible for homelessness the first factor is poverty obviously the poor person will not have a permanent residence then another reason could be drug addiction because of drug addiction many a times people uh, sell off their assets their property their, even their house and finally they become homeless then third situation is war many times in war like situations people have to leave their homes and they have to go to some other places to find a peaceful residence so in that case also they will become homeless fourth circumstances are unemployment unemployment obviously if a person is not able to earn money for their livelihood in that particular scenario that person will have to survive in some temporary residences fifth is divorce if a female which is uh, who is not working and doesn't have any financial independence and the parents are also not ready to keep her so in that particular situation uh, such kind of females will suffer from homelessness and last one is natural disaster the flood tsunami or any other natural disaster earthquake etc in that scenario maybe a person's uh, home has destroyed or that person has become homeless so these are various uh, factors which are responsible for homelessness now 
we will come to uh, slum dwellers what are slum dwellers slum dweller is a person who lives in a slum area right now we'll see the definition of slum according to un habitat a united nations agency a slum is a run down area of a city characterized by substandard housing and squalor and lacking in tenure security so uh, a place of a city which is very run down run down means a place where people uh, have very low standard of living where the living standard is like nobody wants to live in right and it is not pleasant at all and they have a issue of security as well because these areas are not their property so government may any time ask them to leave that particular area now the main features of a slum area it has high rate of poverty right it uh, have high incidence of unemployment obviously these people are poor and these are not educated so generally these people lack employment huge extent of urban decay these areas are uh, having such a environment which consists of lot of decay or wastage from the city breeding ground for social problem because these are poor these are unemployed so obviously they want money for their survival and for that they do crime and even they are uh, more prone to drug addiction or alcoholism because frustration poverty all these things combined um, will create such as circumstances that in frustration people generally go towards bad habits then next is high rate of mental illness and suicide because these people are frustrated so many chances of having mental illness or suicide low level of economic status of residents because they are poor because they are unemployed so their economic status is very low inadequate infrastructural facilities they don't have lighting they don't have sanitation they don't have drinking water so these basic infrastructure facilities are not there acute problem of malnutrition because they don't have money to uh, buy good food or nutritious food and even they are not educated so uh, there are chances that uh, they don't even know about what is a balanced diet then lack of drinking water they don't have safe and secure drinking water lack of basic health care they don't have health and hygiene right then unsanitary environment no sanitation facility and so obviously low standard of living or poor quality of life we could say there uh, it is there in the slum areas now deprivation of rights of homeless and slum dwellers the first and foremost um, deprivation of right is uh, forcible eviction i have already discussed in the class also that many times government for various kinds of project they do forcible evictions and generally these are the people the homeless or the slum dwellers are the people who suffer from these kind of movements the first right is right to freedom of movement because of forced eviction these people are uh, forced to move from one place to another place and this is again uh, obviously against our right to freedom right the right to freedom of movement and choose one's residence are breached then second is right to security these people are not uh, secure in such places the, uh, when forcible eviction is done obviously there is a threat of violence there is a threat to their personal security because wherever they will move nobody knows they will be safe or not then right to education earlier suppose in their slum areas or the nearby areas they were having schools or their kids were having education but because of this forcible eviction they are forced to move in such areas maybe uh, which are in the outskirts of the city and they will not get any, get any education opportunities over there similarly it is uh, with the employment also in their previous residences they were having employment in their nearby areas and because of forcible eviction they Uh, need to move to new areas and in those new areas it is not necessary they'll de- that they'll get employment then right to healthy environment their right to healthy environment is taken off uh, because uh, when they are moved from one place to another and whatever place they will get over there that need not be psychologically or physically good for the individual right so when physical and psychological health of individual is damaged by constant threat of eviction issues of violation of right of health is raised 